Hey guys, it's Lance from Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm here to talk about the death of the cheese grater. He was, he was one of us. He died as so many men of his generation before his time. And so, we commit your final mortal remains to the bosom of the Pacific Ocean. Good night, sweet prince. That's right, folks. It's looking like the end of the road. Um, sure, you can hack it and you can get it running big, sir, but do you want to? My thoughts are you don't. What I would do is stay on Mojave so you can use your old 32-bit apps, be able to go backwards in time and use those files that you have from a few years ago, and keep your Mac Pro alive for that. Use it for whatever you want, but the reality is the new M1 chip that everybody is reviewing, the new Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro 13 inch are smoking our old cheese graters. Even with the 3.36 Xeon 5690s, you're getting beat by a lot. Let's just look at the numbers here. My Mac Pro has the Xeon 5680 in it, 3.33 gigahertz, very close to the 5690s. The single core performance on my Mac Pro scores a geek bench of 643. The new M1 Max score an average of 1689. That's over 2.5 times faster than the Mac Pro single core performance. But it doesn't end there. Bumping up to the multi-core performance Geekbench test. And of course, this is just Geekbench. It's not real world test, but it gives you a good idea. So we have my Mac Pro 12 core 3.33 gigahertz multi-core Geekbench score is 6,401. The M1 multi-core, 7,401. Now, the single core performance on these new computers is faster than any other Mac. Any other Mac, including the new Mac Pros. The new Mac Pros will beat it with the multi-core. The, I think the 8-core still beats it by a little, but not by much. For, you know, a thousand bucks, you can get the Mac Mini and basically almost get the same performance as an 8-core $6,000 Mac Pro for under a thousand bucks, depending on your configuration. So for the money, that is very impressive. And I'm glad I haven't bought a new Mac in a very long time. I still got my 2012 MacBook Pro because I like to have all those ports. I still have my cheese grater, which I've upgraded to death. And I have an old Mac mini. It's a Core 2 Duo. So I got that a long time ago, but it still runs. Basically, I think I'm probably not gonna buy the first generation, although the Mac Mini is very tempting as a secondary computer. But what are they gonna come out with with the Pro models? Like, is Apple even gonna make another Mac Pro? Or are they just gonna ditch that computer altogether? And basically, they can make something much smaller. Now, one of the catches here is there's no eGPU support, meaning you cannot connect an external graphics card to these computers. So that puts the Mac Pro in a weird place because Apple's now making their own GPU basically. So I have a feeling that AMD is a thing of the past with Macs as was Nvidia. So they're getting good graphics performance with these computers as well, at least with Final Cut, which is a very preliminary thing, and that's Apple software, and it's been optimized to work with the M1. But you can do the Bruce X export, 5K export, in 18 seconds on a MacBook Air. That's unbelievable. My Mac Pro cheese grater with the RX 5700 XT can do it in 20 seconds. So it's actually slower than the MacBook Air. It's pretty remarkable that a MacBook Air can outperform my 12-core Mac Pro. I mean, granted, it's a 2009 Mac Pro. It's old, but it's still unbelievable. Now, that being said, we don't know what the gaming benchmarks are yet on these new Macs. I have an RX 5700 XT, and I get a 
pretty good Geekbench Metal score with that and OpenCL score. And it looks like these new Macs are not even half that. So it remains to be seen what kind of gaming performance we'll get with these GPUs that are in the new Macs and what games they can actually play. So hopefully soon we'll see some benchmarks on something like Tomb Raider um, running on these new chips and see what kind of GPU performance they really get with a regular PC game. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're gonna do on the next round. Um, the iMac Pro, that thing is, you know, the next iMac and iMac Pro are probably gonna be ridiculous. Could they put four M1 chips into a computer? Of course they could. They might be able to fit eight of them into like a Mac Pro scenario, but again, Maybe the Mac Pro is going to be a thing of the past. It's going to be interesting. Will they come out with a new Mac Pro or will they kill it? My guess is they're going to kill it and they'll come out with something like the new Mac Mini Pro or the iMac Pro. But will they have a PCIe slotted Mac when they're not going to be supporting anybody else's GPUs anymore? Maybe they'll create their own, you know, M1 slash ProRes accelerator card. But that really puts the Mac Pros in a weird, odd place. And I, for one, will not be buying an Intel Mac Pro. And I'm really glad I didn't dump all the money into that because these starter Macs, are really close to the performance of the base model anyway, the eight core, uh, which most people don't buy anyway. But am I gonna spend 10 grand on a Mac Pro when I could buy 10 Mac minis? <laughs> no, I'm not. They are limited to 16 gigs of RAM, but I'm sure that'll change with the Pro models will probably be 32 and 64. Um, who knows? We don't know yet, but it's the roadmap to the future is very interesting, and I'm really interested to see where the Mac Pro goes, or if there ever is really another Mac Pro tower type of... There'll be a Pro unit, but will it be a tower with PCIe slots? I'm not so sure. So I'm afraid the day of reckoning has finally come, and it's the death of the cheese grater. The old Mac Pro from 2009 to 2012 will need to be laid to rest. Thanks for watching my video. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this. You can give me the thumbs down. Obviously there's a zillion people out there reviewing these units. I'm not gonna go into all of that because it's already out there. I can't keep up with these people, they're too quick. I can't buy all this gear that they get for free. Um, and I always say some negative things about Apple, so they're never going to give me a free Mac. Uh, but they did give me a free iPhone, as in one of my other videos. Thank you, Apple. Um, I will not be buying the iPhone 12 this year. I'll wait till next year. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, and I will see you on the next Mac Sound Solutions video.